Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial on using a calculator. In this tutorial we'll go through the main functionality of any calculator as well as recap rounding. Remember with rounding always look at the digit to the right. If the digit to the right is a 0, 1, 2, 3 or 4 we always round down. And if the digit to the right is a 5, 6, 7, 8 or 9, we always round up. So let's have a look at an example so you can see what I mean. Here we're asked to round 3.4563 to two decimal places. Now the second decimal place is the 5. So we're looking at the 6 because it's the digit to the right to tell us if we need to round up or not. Because it's a 6, that means we round up. So our answer is 3.46 to two decimal places. Rounding is very important in the exam. So it is important that you know how to round, whether it be to decimal places or to significant figures. Now let's have a look at how we can access the general functions of any scientific calculator. What you have to remember is anything above the button which is in yellow is accessed using the shift button. And that is why the shift button is color coded yellow, because it's telling you anything that is yellow must be accessed using the shift button. And to access anything which is red on the calculator, you access it using the alpha button. On the last point, it's really important that you know how to navigate through a calculation using the cursor keys, knowing if you need to go up, down, left or right to come out of an operation. So let's have a look at a past exam question so you can see what I mean. In this past exam question, the question states that we need to use our calculator to work out the square root of 70.25 over 4.2 subtract 2.37. We're asked to write down all the figures on our calculator display, making sure we give our answer as a decimal. So let's input it into our calculator. Firstly, it's important to remember to make it look like the calculation itself. So let's press the fraction button first. Then accessing the square root, 70.25, scrolling out by pressing to the right of the cursor and then down over 4.2 subtract our 2.37. What is important to remember is the calculation on the calculator screen looks identical to the calculation in the exam question. Here our answer is 4.58006956 and we've written all the digits which are on a calculator display. Now the second part wants us to write our answer to part A correct to four decimal places. The fourth decimal place is a zero, the digit to the right is a six, so that means it tells me to round up. So my answer is 4.5801. Now let's have a look at another question. Here the question wants us to use our calculator to work out 38.5 times 14.2 over 18.4 subtract 5.9. Again, we're asked to write down all the figures on our calculator display and we must give our answer as a decimal. Part B wants us to write our answer to part A correct to one significant figure. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. So remember, access your fraction button first, so the question looks like this on your calculator screen. Then inputting 38.5 times 14.2, don't forget to use your cursor keys to go down so we can input our calculation here, which is 18.4 subtract 5.9. Remember the exam question will look the same on your calculator display. Now pressing equals will reveal the answer to be a fraction, but we want it as a decimal. So press SD to convert it into a decimal to give us 43.736. Now part B wants us to round our answer correct to one significant figure. So we look at the first digit, which is our four. Remember the digit to the right is a three, 
because it's a 3, we round 43.736 down to 40. So now let's try the next exam question. Here the question wants us to use our calculator to work out this calculation and write down all the figures on our calculator display. The next part wants us to give our answer to the first part to correct to three significant figures. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. Now remember to press the fraction button first so we can input our calculation on the top and the bottom of our fraction. Then we press the square root of 46.2. Don't forget to scroll to the right to come out of the square root. Subtract 17.5 and you can see it looks exactly the same as the calculation on top. Over 2.39 and then squared. Then scroll to the right to come out of the squared and we multiply by our 0 0.7. So you can see the calculation given in the exam looks exactly the same as the calculation on our calculator display, which gives us minus 2.67675931. Now the second part wants us to give our answer to three significant figures. So this is our first significant figure, second and third, which is the seven. The 6 tells the 7 that we need to round up to give us minus 2.68. So let's have a look at our last exam question. Here the question wants us to use our calculator to work out this calculation and write down all the figures on our calculator display. Part B wants us to write our answer to part A correct to two decimal places. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. When doing these calculations, you do not need to find or insert the degrees sign. This is automatically done when your calculator is set in degrees. To do this, it's very simple. Look for the D. If you do not have the D there, it's really easy. You simply press Shift and Set Up. Then you access number 2, which is the angle unit, and select number 1, which is degrees. From here, you'll see the D. An alternative method is to reset your entire calculator. To do this, you press Shift and 9. And then you simply press 3 to reset everything, say yes with equals, and it's reset and it's done. And it automatically resets it back to degrees. So now we have our calculator set in degrees, let's insert our calculation. Well, let's access the cube root first by Shift and square root. You can see that's the cube root accessed then our fraction button and we can insert our top calculation. Sin 25, you'll notice it opens brackets so we need to close it. Add sin 40, open brackets and we need to close it. This means sin 25 degrees add sin 40 degrees. Scrolling down, we access cos 25 degrees, close brackets, subtract cos 40 degrees, close brackets. Now you'll notice it looks slightly different to what was given in the exam, but that's because we're using trigonometry. Now, writing all the figures on our calculated display, we have 1.96572844. Rounding this to two decimal places, we're looking at our 6. The 5 to the right of the 6 tells it we must round up, giving me my final answer of 1.97. I hope this tutorial has been useful, especially when accessing functions which are yellow using our shift key or red using our alpha key. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.